Hi, my name's Rich Harrington for Adorama TV, and today we're taking a look at the Ultrabook platform from Intel. Now, a lot of you are thinking about getting a new laptop. Maybe it's because you're using new computer apps and you want a little more power, or you're just looking for some more performance. The cool thing here is this new Ultrabook platform really is trying to balance out portability with style. You see we've got a lot of options here depending upon what you're looking for, and it really is a good balance of weight to performance. What I like about these machines is that they're all clocking in around two and a half pounds. So if you're out there shooting photos and you want the ability to keep a laptop with you, two and a half pounds more in your bag is just really like adding one more lens. And with an eight hour battery life, you can get a long use here. That's really gonna come in handy. The other thing I like about these is that unlike some of the early ultra portable laptops we had, these really do seem to be a good balance of RAM and graphics performance for real professional users. Now you're gonna see that these machines run from four to eight gigabytes of RAM. I'm a big fan of going with the eight gig option, but all in all, the overall performance of these machines is definitely in line with what you need to do things like Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom. There's three new technologies in the Ultrabook platform that I like, and it took a little while to wrap my head around it, so let me try to explain what they do. The first is called Rapid Start, and basically this is an alternative to powering down or going into the hibernate mode that you might be used to in Windows. And this is a three times faster startup. The way it works is it's just a low power sleep mode. So what's good about this is two things. First off, it means less battery is consumed. So when you put the computer to sleep, you're gonna have longer standby times. It means a lot quicker on the restart. So if you've put the computer to sleep, you open up the lid, you push the power button, about a six second time to you're up and running again. This is great, and it's really driven by the fact that these laptops, these Ultrabooks, are using an SSD. So instead of having to spin up the hard drive or wait for the laptop to really wake up, it just pulls that right in off of a dedicated SSD, and you get that jump start so you can resume a lot more quickly. I really like that because it doesn't mean any downtime. Another thing here is this really cool smart response technology. Now again, this is tied into the SSD, and what works well here is that the apps you're using are gonna be readily available. What happens in this case is that the apps you're using most frequently automatically put their data, or even the application themselves, get stored on that dedicated SSD. So instead of having to wait for the slower disk to spin up, your most commonly used files are gonna be accessible right away. This is gonna give you about a two times performance boost for things like booting or launching your favorite applications. Another thing I really liked when I was playing with these is the Smart Connect option. Essentially what it does is even though the laptop is asleep, the Ultrabook will wake up periodically to a low power state. And if it's got an active internet connection such as Wi-Fi, it's gonna take advantage of things like sync. So if you're using cloud-based services like Dropbox or maybe a cloud-based calendar, that's gonna sync. If you've got email or social network updates, those are gonna go ahead and download. So the cool thing is, is when you open up the laptop and you jump in, there's your messages waiting for you. The Ultrabook line is really designed for a couple of core users. First off, if you're a business user or a personal user and you're on the go, this is a great laptop. With an eight hour battery life, this is gonna really give you that long, all day usage that you need. These also have the 64-bit OS installed. Now currently we're at a changeover time from Windows 7 to Windows 8. So all of these have an upgrade path to go to Windows 8 for like $15, which is super easy. But they do ship with the 64-bit option. These are gonna be necessary in order to properly run the Adobe Creative Suite. So I went ahead and downloaded Adobe Creative Suite and gave it a try on a lot of these Ultrabooks. It worked just fine. I did find that things like photo and web apps were great. Video editing, a little bit more taxing on some of the Ultrabooks, but if you make sure to go with the option that has the eight gigabytes of RAM, it worked really well for your typical DSLR video workflow. You see we got video playing, I was browsing video with Bridge, it works just fine. One of the things that I think a lot of people are concerned about is the screens here, and this is an area that you're gonna have to make some important decisions. All of these top out at 1366 by 768, and you got a couple of options. There's the dedicated, uh, option of going with a graphics card like is such as an NVIDIA one that could be tacked on or using the integrated Intel engine. I like to use the added on boosted graphics card when available for that extra performance, but I did find that the integrated Intel chips were very snappy and held up just fine for things like Photoshop. All of these screens have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is cool. You're watching things like movies 
or you're working with modern software applications, lots of room for palettes. I really like that. So if you're working in these apps, you got plenty of room to see the image and actually design and have your tools up. So that's going to work well. Now this 1366 by 768 is not a true HD resolution because you're going to sacrifice some of that resolution with the size and the performance here. That's a decision you're going to have to make. Now these do have HDMI output and they typically will upscale and allow you to send out a 1080p signal. So if you are going to play back an HD movie and you want to send it out to a television or a projector, that's going to work fine. But on the screens themselves, you are going to be limited to that resolution that's a little bit above 720p. Now the screens themselves vary greatly and this is one of the factors that drives the price the most. We got smaller screens like 11 and inches up to bigger screens like 14 inches. These are all very reasonable, although I do find that I like the larger screen myself. But again, if you want really small and portable, something like this is going to be useful to just drop into your camera bag. You really have to decide, is this your only laptop or is this your ultra portable laptop? Now, to make that decision easier, let's talk a bit about the connections. All of these laptops offer the standard options here for wireless and Bluetooth. In fact, they're using the newer Bluetooth option, which is even more power efficient with greater range. Bluetooth is going to allow you to use things like headsets if you want to do mobile calls or conferencing when you're on the road, or even Bluetooth speakers. You can go ahead and pair devices like your phone for syncing. It works great. They also have USB 3 and USB 2. I love USB 3. Keep in mind, this is 10 times faster than USB 2 and about 2 to 3 times faster than FireWire 800. This is great. A lot of you are holding out for Thunderbolt. Trust me, don't worry about Thunderbolt on a laptop. In most cases, Thunderbolt speed really only kicks in when you've got performance disk rates, four or five drives striped together and a powered enclosure. Another thing we're seeing on all these is tends to be some type of card reader. Typically, this is going to be an SD card reader, which will allow you to use SD memory cards or other types of form factors with the SD card adapter. But with USB 3, it's very easy to plug in a CF adapter or any other type of option that you need. The ports on these machines tend to be few and small, though, which is one drawback. Because of the smaller size, you're not going to have as many ports. Do remember that when you're looking at these options, you might need to pick up a few accessories and keep a few dongles or adapter cables in your bag. What you sacrifice in size, you're also giving up in connection options. So some of the ports you're used to having on a full-size laptop or a computer just aren't there. But eight hours of battery life and two and a half pounds means that I can carry this Ultrabook just about anywhere I need to go. Another area that's on a lot of people's minds is sound. Now, with audio, this is one area that these Ultrabooks tend to suffer. That's because they're so small and they're trying to be power conscious. So the built-in speakers typically are sort of average quality. Now, there is one notable exception here. The HP line has this available option of Beats by Dre. Really good performance. They've branded this. They've worked with Dr. Dre, the music producer. And there's an extra control panel. So if you're looking for really solid built-in sound, maybe you're using this as an entertainment center in your apartment, or you just want something for when you're on the road in a hotel room, these speakers are great. Otherwise, for everything else, I'd recommend that you use headphones or dedicated speakers or of course, going out the HDMI port to a television, you could take advantage of the surround sound system or whatever you're using in your entertainment system. Now, let's talk about processors. A lot of people get hung up on processor speed. The good news is, is that these are fairly versatile. We've got Intel dual core, and it's the newer Ivy Bridge option. And what you're looking at is either an i5 or an i7. Now, the i5 processor is the more common here. It's definitely more affordable because it's not the top of the line but you can step up to the i7 if you need that extra power. Again, much like RAM, the i5 is perfectly versatile for things like photo editing, web design work, office applications. You're gonna go with video editing, video encoding, animation, motion graphics, definitely go for the i7. And when you do, you're on par with a lot of the top workstations and laptops that are out there. So it's really a matter of cost and performance. Now, the thing is, when it comes to specs, they change frequently. From the time I record this to the time you watch this to a couple of months down the road, these laptops, these Ultrabooks will have all seen processor bumps and upgrades. So I always recommend you log in to Adorama.com, check the specs, and see where things are at. Do that head-to-head -head comparison and pick out the processor that's right for you. 
it's really trying to find the right price and value. These Ultrabooks range in price from about $700 up to about $1,400 or $1,500. There's a lot of options that you're going to have to compare. What I recommend is you pay very close attention to the tech specs when shopping. The big options here are going to be the processor speed, i5 versus i7. If you're doing a lot of video, consider stepping up to the i7. And then RAM. And with RAM, it's really important you think about that at time of purchase. Most of these machines only have two slots. In some cases, the RAM may or may not be upgradable. So getting it filled up with the RAM you need up front, stepping up to six gigs or perhaps eight gigs. The other big option to think about is storage. Most of these Ultrabooks are gonna use a combination of technologies. You can get a hard disk drive, your typical spinning platter, and these are gonna give you the ability to get really large capacity. Now, that's fine, and maybe that's what you want because you don't want to be hanging off extra hard drives. On the other hand, if you want the ultimate in battery life, that's where the solid state drive comes in. Unfortunately, though, solid state drives are more expensive and don't offer the same high capacities. Another thing to look about is the brightness of the screens. Now, as you see here, all of these do great in your typical office environment. They're not the brightest screens on the market, but they do get plenty bright. I did find that all of them were more than acceptable for working outdoors. If I was doing mission critical work like color correction, I would recommend the use of a hood, such as one of those from Hoodbin that you could attach to just give you a better lighting environment. However, in your typical office, mixed lighting, sunlight, daylight, low light situation, all of the screens perform great, and they all have a similar resolution and contrast ratio. Most of these have an HD backlit LED, which holds up very well under mixed lighting, and it does a very good job of giving a nice, bright image. One drawback to realize with all of these Ultrabooks, you're giving up the DVD drive or the Blu-ray drive. So if you need that, you're gonna have to go with an external that you attach, or maybe load that material in from home, but you're not gonna be able to just put in optical discs. That's because they want the better battery life and the much slimmer form factor. So the bottom line is this. If you're looking to go ahead and add a laptop to your workflow, these Ultrabooks are a great addition. They're a really good balance of speed and performance, plus affordability. I don't really see these as a desktop replacement if you need a hardcore machine. So I recommend that if you're looking for a little bit of extra power to take with you in the field, the Ultrabook series is great. And make sure you take a look at it because Intel's really done a nice job of stepping up and adding new features that are designed for the performance user who's on the go. Head on over to Adorama.com. There's a tons of reviews there that you could check out on these machines as well as take a look at the latest specs. And for Adorama TV, my name's Rich Harrington. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.